he felt very pompous, very grand, and the whole time he was doing it, uh, he was just a different person. I'm surrounded by nothing but incompetent, stupid, sterile stenographers. I'll get you a pen. Don't bother. I won't send it. Get out, get out, get out! Neither Chaplin's imagination nor the resources of Hollywood could duplicate Albert Speer's grandiose design for the Reich Chancellery. But in photos of Hitler's study, Chaplin noticed something which he seized upon. Others claimed it was their idea, but its origins can be found in a home movie taken as early as 1928. Chaplin is fooling for visitors, as he so often did, when he suddenly came up with this strange idea involving the globe and a German helmet. It summed up perfectly the Führer's godlike ambition. But, said picture-goer, by the time Chaplin finishes his picture, we may all have forgotten who Hitler was. It's the stormtroopers, they're after you. You better get up on the roof. No, I'll stay here. Come on, they'll kill you. No, I'll stay and fight. You just call me a fool. Do you want to be murdered? Get on the roof, quick. Come on, come on. Bravely, Chaplin turns his camera away from the obvious and shows us this symbolic shot. There goes the barber shop. Never mind, we can start again. We can go to Austerlitz, that's still a free country. The main filming was no sooner finished than Hitler launched his blitzkrieg. France fell in a month, Denmark in a matter of hours. Chaplin was so appalled, he considered withholding the film. This newsreel shows Hitler at the moment he heard of the fall of France. Chaplin said, he is a horrible menace to civilization rather than someone to laugh at. I felt that this was a terrible thing to make a comic film about him. There are two things which are very dangerous to, to associate uh, humor with people like that and to diminish them. Comedy is the greatest way to attack anything like a totalitarian regime. They can't stand it, and that gives the people a chance to laugh too. You can't go on being grim forever. There are people who came out of Buchenwald, who came out because of their sense of humor. Courage doesn't do it. Laughs do. This was to have been part of Chaplin's original ending, which he'd begun work on months before. Soldiers discarding their weapons and uniting in a folk dance. The sequence involved hundreds of actors and technicians. Here, Chaplin tries out the opening of the sequence, his own arrival. He rehearses obsessively the same gesture over and over again, trying to perfect it, while all the time the camera turns. He repeats it with stand-ins, so he can observe it from the camera. But he knows the sequence is not working. He vents his frustration on an assistant director, for he knows something more fundamental is wrong. In this form, he would abandon the sequence. Instead, he realized his ending would have to focus much more on his own speech, which he would deliver not as the dictator, not as the barber, but as himself, Charlie Chaplin. Hitler's attack on France gave him the impetus to rewrite the speech, which would be a plea for peace, a plea for sanity. And he was 458 days into the picture before he was ready to shoot it. At dawn, on the very day Chaplin was delivering his plea for freedom, Hitler swept into Paris to view his latest conquest. Mm -hmm. 
a carpet of flowers greeted the Führer when he returned to Berlin. He was at the zenith of his power, having achieved his victories with incredible speed. Said Chaplin's son, if only Charlie could move as fast as Adolf Hitler. The Chaplin was still not happy with his film and was reshooting yet again. The ghetto set had been torn down, so he rebuilt it. He would spend months reshooting, re-editing and re-recording before finally, after 559 days of work, the report sheet showed no rushes, no shooting, no recording. He was ready to show his picture to the world. The film opened in two Broadway theatres simultaneously, attended by a crowd so full of celebrities it was commemorated in a special cartoon. He was going to show up, we knew that. There, were, there was an enormous amount of publicity and the crowds in front of the theatre were no, tremendous. We received an absolute ovation. People stood, cheered, uh, called for Chaplin. Here this man had come out against Hitler. It was as if the greatest angel in the calendar of saints and angels had suddenly taken a stand. It was such a brilliant uh, tour de force that I think it blinded people as to what it was uh, uh, saying or, or, uh, or not saying. When you think of a movie that begins with uh, Big Bertha defecating and ending up <laughs> with that speech to camera and the first time he had spoken. When you think of the span, emotionally, that that movie covers, uh, it's, it, it's a miracle. You must speak. I can't. You must. It's our only hope. Hope. I mean, that ending doesn't come as an abrupt thing. He builds it so carefully, prepares you so carefully for your own feelings to be involved on another level. I'm not saying that laughter isn't a feeling. It's a, it's a tremendous feeling. But to get rid of the laughter feeling and slowly let this other emotion well up. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. I wept at the ending. I, I, it was something to me that had to be said. Uh, if it was inartistic, it was inartistic. I don't care. Uh, nothing has to be perfect. It seemed uh, mawkish and maudlin at the time, but in the context of the nuclear age, I think it, it has great resonance and great power. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. So at the end of this speech, he dares to remind you that you don't have to go on killing. You don't have to be a totalitarian. Uh, you can make do with the worst people in the world. Somehow you must. And that's what he did. And there are a lot of people with violence in their soul 
resented the fact that someone wanted peace. But Chaplin said he would never have made the great dictator had he known the full horror of Hitler's crimes. Millions were grateful that he did. Chaplin brings us to tears because he reminds us of the potential of mankind lighting a lantern and keeping it aside while mankind goes on destroying itself and being there when the war is over to relight the lantern and to give us hopes for tomorrow. At the height of the Blitz on London, the film opened to an ecstatic reaction. The best propaganda film since the start of the war for the British people, said one. The best heartener we could have. The film was to go on to become Chaplin's biggest moneymaker. Yet it was banned across Europe, in parts of South America, and even Ireland. But did Hitler see it? At the end of the war, I was in Berlin. Uh, I was in charge of the uh, gathering the photographic uh, evidence for the war crime trial that was being prepared in, in Nuremberg. But in the course of it, I looked up the file on what films Hitler had uh, had ordered to run. And this is the truth. True. He ordered the Great Dictator, and then. He ordered it a day or so after again. Es ist mir klipp und klar gewesen, dass der sich das vorführen hat lassen und dann auch gelacht haben wird. Wissen Sie, der Hitler war auch schlau. Und ich kann mir auch sehr gut vorstellen, dass er über diesen Film von Charlie Chaplin, wo der mit dem Mussolini er auf zwei Stühlen sitzt beim Friseur, und dann hochgekurbelt wird, wird er sicher sehr herzlich gelacht haben. Er war ja kein Kostverächter. Er konnte über solche Sachen lachen. Nicht im engeren Kreis wird er das nie öffentlich oder so. The German public did not see the film during the war, but the German army did. Once. In occupied Belgrade, as a 17-year-old working in film dispatch, Nikola Radosevich discovered a print. Wir wollten machen kulturelle Sabotage. Ich, ich gehöre zum blauen Band, wie ich habe sie gesagt. Wir sind nie mit Waffen äh, gegen die deutschen Soldaten etwas gemacht. Nein, nur etwas mit Spaß. Wir wollten, dass Hitler hört, was denkst du über ihn, Charlo Chaplin. Nicholas substituted the Chaplin film for the German feature the soldiers were to see. Bei Beginnung von Vorführung Uh, Leute haben nicht gleichzeitig bemerkt, was ist denn. Aber nach den 40 Minuten oder 45 Minuten ist Fu, eine von SS-Mann hatte mit Gewehr erschissen in, in, in Wand, in weiche Wand. Und alle anderen sind durch Türe schnell rausgegangen, weil wollt, wollte nicht mehr dort sein, weil passiert etwas gegen die Hitler. 1945, the last shots of Hitler before his suicide. Hitler's world lay in ruins. When the Reich Chancellery was captured by the Russians, they found nothing but rubble. But one object remained intact. With the great dictator, Chaplin had strengthened millions through the power of laughter at a time when madness and darkness covered the world. Despite his plea for sanity, the political climate of the McCarthy era forced him into exile. In 1952, he was locked out of the United States. But one country would welcome him back. Now the train draws into Waterloo Station, only a short distance from Chaplin's actual birthplace. And what a great reception greets him and his family from the thousands who have gathered to welcome him home. When he left America a week ago, Charlie was worried in case our affection for him had dimmed. Londoners show him now that he need not have worried. We can never forget him or the laughter he brought into our lives. Throughout the world, he is loved for his genius. Chaplin was not born great. 
Yet in a lifetime crowded with laughter and tears, he has achieved an everlasting greatness.